Hi again, it's Tim, your Living Sky Guy from the Paris of the Prairies, beautiful Saskatoon. And on occasion, people will ask me, Tim, what's a good telescope to start with? And as I've always said, start with binoculars, a good book, and a dark sky. But if you've gone beyond that and it's time to look at a telescope, well, the answer to the question is a little more complicated. There's quite a few different styles of telescopes to choose from. And I want to show you what their strengths and weaknesses are. But I've only got a couple of telescopes myself. So normally I'd say, let's just go to a store that sells telescopes and I can give you a really good selection. But I got something better than that. I'm gonna introduce you to my good friend, Ron Waldron, Saskatchewan's own star man. And Ron is a person who's been involved in astronomy almost all of his life. As an educator uh, who's now retired, he spent his entire career teaching science and astronomy to young minds and in his retirement, he hasn't slowed down yet. You can still find him in classrooms, you can find him at day camps, you can find him at the Churchill Northern Studies Center in Churchill, Manitoba. You can even find him on a cruise ship in the fjords of Norway, spreading the gospel of astronomy to people young and old. And on top of all that, he's got an amazing telescope collection. So let's hop in the car, go for a ride, and let me introduce you to Saskatchewan's own Starman. So tell me a little bit about why you are so involved in astronomy. Well, it began when I was 10 years old, and uh, my dad uh, worked at a drive-in theater, and when the show was over, and all the cars left, he sat me under the stars, and I just never forgot that moment. And since the age of 10, I've been buying telescopes, selling telescopes, teaching astronomy, doing all of it, and it's one of those things where I just never lost interest. A lot of people you know, are, wanted to have one telescope or maybe two telescopes, so what makes a man want to have at least five telescopes? <laughs> That's a hard one to explain, but if I were to say to you that every one of the telescopes that I have has its own purpose, has its own reason for being. So every telescope has a purpose that is different from the other telescope. I'm going to sort of turn this over to you and we're going to go take a look at this a little bit closer at the scope. This, Tim, is my uh, Maxitov Cassegrain telescope. It's a little stubby telescope that I carry in a backpack. It's on an altazimuth mount, so up and down, left and right, and it's very good for just uh, basically taking on a hike with you. This telescope is a refractor telescope, that is, it's uh, very much like uh, what Galileo first used, and this is an 80 millimeter. I use it for photography on the moon and the planets, but it's also an excellent telescope to carry on an airplane if you're going to travel. This is uh, my larger telescope, it's an 8-inch Celestron schmidt cassegrain telescope. It's on an equatorial mount. So this one is computer-driven, it's called a go-to telescope. It'll find literally anything in the sky that I want, and it's also very good for photography. This telescope is my 10-inch Dobsonian telescope, and it is what I call my public viewing telescope. So if I'm going into classrooms or if I'm doing star nights out at school camps, this is the telescope that I take and it never fails to impress and it travels and sets up very quickly and easily. And this, Tim, is my telescope. This is my 12 and a half inch daub and uh, it is just for my personal use. I take it to star parties and when I really want to peer deeply into space, this is the telescope of choice. Well, once you make the switch to a telescope from, let's say, a pair of binoculars, uh, I would suggest a Dobsonian telescope. Anything around a six inch or an eight inch is an excellent starter scope for young people or even for an adult just starting out in the hobby. It forces you to learn the sky and it's easy to set up and easy to point. I seldom go over 100 power anytime. So on the planets, you might want to try, you know, 150, 200 if the night's really clear. But generally speaking, my eyepiece of choice is one that gives me around 100 times. <laughs> uh, in my memory, it's under 10, but it's really close to 10. <laughs> 
And I still remember my very first telescope. I bought it at Waskasu Lake at the age of 10. It cost me $3.75, and it got me to where I am today. I kind of wish I still had that telescope, but I used it so much it fell apart in my hands. <laughs> Just that astronomy is a very personal hobby. Uh, you can do it alone, you can do it in a, in a group. Um, but it really creates a oneness with I'm gonna say the universe, I know that sounds tacky, but it does. And you and I know that when we're out observing, we don't listen to radios, we don't listen to music. We're just comfortable in the outside atmosphere, observing things that are very, very far away. And it's magical to look at Saturn. It's magical to look deep into the universe at things that to most people are just fuzzy, but we know what they really are and we're just amazed we can capture their light. No, it's, it's a wonderful hobby. It's, I've never left it. So there you have it, folks. I hope that answers some questions for you. I want to thank you, Ron, for spending the time and giving us a little bit more education. And I hope this helps you when you're going out there to decide on the first scope that you're going to buy, and the second, and the third, and the fourth, etc. If you want to continue on this voyage of discovery with me, please click on the subscribe button. And you can also follow my personal exploits on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for Living Sky Guy. Clear skies, everyone. And last question, you don't have to answer this one if you don't want to. <laughs> is your wife a saint? <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> Am I being filmed? <laughs> She'd have to be. I like to say I married well but that's because I did.